Hi guys, in this video we're going to have a look at how we generate sequences. So definitely have a look at my um, nth term of linear sequences first, because that will definitely make things a little bit easier for this. Um, but what we need to generate a sequence is what's called the nth term, hence why it's useful to see the video beforehand. And this is the nth term here, 2n plus 5. And all the question says is it wants the first five numbers in the sequence of 2n plus 5. Now, if you've watched the video, what you'll know is that the 2n here just means the 2 times table, and then we add 5. So that's one way that you can work this out. So let's just do that. So we've got 2n, which is the 2 times table. So we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. So that's the 2n. So to get 2n plus 5, all I do is add 5 to all of these numbers here. So obviously 2 add 5 gives me the 7. 4 add 5 is 9. 6 add 5, 11. Uh, 8 add 5, 13. And then 10 add 5 is 15. And then that would be your answer. 7, 9, 11, 13, and 15. So that's one way that you can do it. The other way is to use the flowchart or substitution. So what I mean by that is I use the flowchart. So I've got n. I times it by 2. I add 5. And then I get my answer. So if I want the first term in the sequence, n would be 1. 1 times 2 is 2 plus 5 is 7. So for the second number, n would be 2. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 5 is 9. And then the third number, 3 times 2 is 6, uh, plus 5. Um, oh, sorry, I'm talking about 2 times 2 is 4, plus 5 is, is 9, sorry. I don't know where I got the 5 from, sorry, it's 9. And then 3 times 2 is 6, plus 5 is 11. Then if I want the fourth number, 4 times 2 is 8, then plus the 5 gives me the 13. And then if I want the fifth number... 5 times 2 is 10, then plus the 5, I get 15. So you can see I get exactly the same answer, if I don't make a mistake, um, doing it that way or this way. So let's have a go at the next one then. So right, I've just realised that I've missed the E off there, so we'll just add that on there. Write the first five numbers of the sequence, 3n minus 1. So I'm going to do both ways again. So 3n is the 3 times table, so 3, 6, 9... 12 and 15, so that's that 3n bit. And then if I do 3n, which is the 3 times double, take away 1, all I do is subtract 1 from each of these. So that's going to leave me with 2, 5, 8, 11, and 14. Okay, so again, that's that way or this way using the uh, uh, substitution or flowchart. I have n, I times it by 3 first. And then I take away 1, and that's going to give me my answer. So for the first, I'll just write these out first. Second, third, fourth, and fifth. So for the first term, n would be 1. 1 times 3 is 3. Take away 1 is 2. Second number in the sequence, so n would be 2. 2 times 3 is 6. Take away 1 is 5. Third number in the sequence, n would be 3. 3 times 3 is 9. Take away 1 is 8. Fourth number in the sequence, n would be 4. 4 times 3 is 12. Take away 1 is 11. And the last one, fifth number in the sequence, so n would be 5. 5 times 3 is 15. Take away 1 is 14. So there you go, exactly the same, but slightly different ways of doing it. So let's have a look at something a bit trickier. My pen is rolling away. So this one here, minus 4n plus 3. It might be written like this, 3 minus 4n. These are exactly the same thing. It's just switched the other way around. In the exam, it's likely to be written like this. So if it helps you, what I recommend is to switch it around to have the minus 4n plus 3, so it's like the same sort of way of writing it as before. But just a quick heads up, those are exactly the same thing. We tend to write it this way because it's better to have a positive and then a negative there, so it looks a bit neater than having a negative on the outside here. That's the only reason why it's done, just looks better, 
but they are the same. So I'll do both methods again. Minus 4n is just a minus 4 times table, which is just the 4 times table but negative. So minus 4, minus 8, minus 12, minus 16, and minus 20. So that's the minus 4n bit. So if I want minus 4n plus 3, all I do is add 3 to each of those. So be careful with negatives. Remember, we go up the number line. So minus 4 plus 3 goes up, so that'll be minus 1. Minus 8 plus 3 go up to minus 5. Uh, minus 12 add 3 would be minus 9. 16 add 3 would be minus 13. And then minus 12 going up 3 would be minus 17. Okay, same thing for the flow chart. I've got my n, but this time I times it by minus 4, because so, it's 4, sorry, minus 4n, so times it by minus 4. Then I add 3, and then I get my answer or my term, however you want to call it. Okay, so again, the first term, n would be 1. 1 times minus 4 is minus 4, plus 3 is minus 1 for the first number. Second number, n would be 2. 2 times minus 4 is minus 8, plus 3 is minus 5. Third number, n would be 3. 3 times minus 4 is minus 12. Um, add 3 would be minus 9. Fourth number, n would be 4. 4 times minus 4, but minus 16. Uh, plus the 3 would be minus 13. And the last one for the fifth number, fifth number would be n would be 5. Times minus 4 is minus 20. Plus 3 is the minus 17. So there's two different ways you can do it. Now, this one here gets a little bit more tasty, a bit more juicy, because we have fractions. Now, what some people like to do, if they uh, are quite good at converting between uh, fractions... Uh, and decimals is convert these to decimals and have 0.5n minus 0.25 because it's easier to add and subtract decimals. That's absolutely fine. You can do that and it would make it just as, uh, as simple as these other ones we've been doing. But I'm just going to show you how to do it with fractions. So you might be able to do this straight away and write down the half times table, which obviously would be a half, one, one and a half, two, and two and a half, just going up in halves. And then you need to take away a quarter. Okay, so if you take away a quarter, half take away a quarter is a quarter. One take away a quarter leaves you with three quarters. One and a half take away a quarter leaves you with one and a quarter. Two take away a quarter is one and three quarters. And two and a half take away a quarter is two and a quarter. So that's the sequence. But that might be hard. If you're not very good with your fractions, or to be, fair, to be fair, this is quite an easy example, that might not be accessible. So this is the other way that you can do it. What I suggest you do is you make the denominators the same. Because remember, whenever you're adding or subtracting fractions, the denominators must be the same. So I've got two and four here, so I'm gonna change them both to be a four. So I'm gonna change a half to be two over four. So they're still the same fraction. I've just times the top and the bottom by two to make the denominator four. And obviously, because that's already four, we can leave it as that. Why does that help? Well, if you do exactly the same thing and write down the two quarters times table, we're gonna have, I'll just draw a line to show they're separate. So we'll have two quarters, and then we're gonna have four over four. Then we're going to have 6 over 4, 8 over 4, and then 10 over 4. So all I'm doing is I'm just adding 2 to the numerator each time. It's just going up by 2 quarters each time. Okay, so that's the first bit that makes it a bit easier. And then if you take away a quarter, I'm just 2 quarters take away 1 quarter, just leaves you with 1 quarter. 4 over 4, if you take away 1 quarter, leaves you with three quarters, six quarters, take away one quarter is five quarters. So as you can see, all I'm doing is just taking away one from the numerator each time. And I can do that because the denominators, the bottom numbers are the same. Now you might think, hang on a minute, some of these are different. Well, a quarter is the same, three quarters is the same. One and one quarter, 
that's just a mixed number version of this top heavy fraction here. So by all means, convert that to mixed or convert that to top heavy. But if you wrote that, that would be absolutely fine. You would get the marks. Okay. It's like the same thing with this one and doing the um, flow chart. You can just do either way. You can keep it as a half and do n times a half minus a quarter. But essentially, it's the same sort of thing here. I'm not going to do that because it's just I've explained how to do it here as well. Okay. But you could use the flow chart with fractions. Um, it's entirely up to you how you do it. Okay, so you've got two options there. If you can do it, go straight for it. Otherwise, I would highly recommend making the denominators the same because it makes it a little bit easier here. Or again, if you're comfortable with converting them to decimals, by all means, go down that route as well. And I've just got two more examples to show you, which are here. So these ones are slightly different. You notice now it's got a squared, so it's an n squared. In this case, it's not too bad. You can still do it. You can just write down the square numbers. So 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, and 5 squared is 25. So I've got my square numbers, and then we just take away 3. So take away 3 would give us minus 2, 1, 6, 13, and 22. And that would be the sequence, not a problem. Again, you could flowchart it, n, you could square that number, and then you could take away 3, and get your answer. So 1 squared is 1, minus 3 is minus 2. 2 squared um, is 4, take away 3 is 1, and so on and so forth, just like we did here to get those ones. Okay? Now where it gets trickier is when you have something like this. Here we only had 1n, and all the other ones as well, we only had 1n. Here I've got an n squared and another n here for 2n. When it's like this, you can't do this trick and you can't do this trick. You have to take your time and do substitution. So definitely have a look at the substitution video, but let's go through it here. So I'm just going to write first number, second number, third number, fourth number, and then the last one, the fifth number. Okay, and like I said, we're going to use substitution. So for the first number, n is 1. So take a step by step, very slow, take your time. So 1 squared is the first bit. Then I take away 2n. So 2n just means 2 times n. So if n is 1, that would be 2 times 1. And then I plus 1. Okay, then it's just a bit of bid mass. Indices first. So 1 squared is 1. And then Bid mass tells us to do the multiplication. So I'll have 1 minus, and then 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1. And then obviously just subtracting and adding are the same, so I can just go along. So 1 take away 2 is minus 1, plus 1 leaves me with 0. OK, so as you can see, it's very step by step. Take your time. For the second number, n is 2. OK, so this one, n was 1. This one, n is 2. And again, I'm going to substitute them in. So n is 2, so that's going to give me 2 squared. And then I'm going to take away 2n, so 2 times 2. And then I add 1 at the end. Bid mass again, indices first. Then my multiplication. And then just work it out. 4 take away 4 is 0, plus 1 is 1. And so on and so forth. For the third number, n is 3, substitute it in, 3 squared, take away 2 times n, well n is 3, so 2 times 3 plus 1, bid mass, 3 squared is 9, 2 times 3 is 6, oh, we've got a bit, we skipped a step there, we will do it step by step. So I've done my indices, now multiplication, 2 times 3 is 6, and then plus 1, so 9 minus 6 is 3, plus 1 is 4, fourth number, n is 4, 4 squared minus 2 times 4, because it's 2n, n is 4, plus 1. Indices, 4 squared is 16. Timesing, 2 times 4 is 8. 16 take away 8 is 8, plus 1 is 9. And the final one, fifth number, n would be 5. So 5 squared minus 2 times 5 plus 1. Bid mass, indices first, 5 squared, 25. 
Then multiplication, 2 times 5 is 10. 25, take away 10 is 15, plus 1 is 16. Okay, so that's just a quick heads up of how you would generate a sequence that has more than one n in it. Okay, it's a bit trickier, does involve substitution. You will need to take your time, definitely remember bid mass, and also be very careful of your negatives as well. Some of them do throw in the old double negative, okay? So there's a few different strategies there for tackling how to generate a sequence. Thanks for watching, guys.